Thinking about setting up security cameras around your home and powering multiple smart devices in the office? You know, then the chances are you have come to cross the term of the POE switch. And maybe you have even browsed a few online, but quickly found yourself lost in the sea of the specs like POE, POE Plus, POE Plus Plus, power budgets, managed versus unmanaged, active or passive. But don't worry, you're not the only one. Choosing the right POE switch can be surprisingly tricky. And if you make the wrong choice, it could mean poor device performance, overheating, or wasting money on something that you don't actually need. In this video, we're going to simplify the process for you. We'll have created a series of episodes about how to choose the POE switch. We'll break down the key things to look for in the POE switch and talk about the common mistakes to avoid and help you match the right POE switch to your real world setup. When selecting a POE switch, one of the most crucial factors to consider is a maximum power output per port. This directly impacts the type of devices you can power, the overall energy efficient of your network setup, and the compatibility of your connected devices. The power output capacity is largely determined by the POE standard supported by the switch, as well as whether the power output is passive or active. Here's a closer look at these important aspects. POE standards, IEEE 2.3 AF, AT, and BT. There are three primary POE standards, each offering different levels of power per port. IEEE 2.3 AF, this is original POE standard, providing up to 50.4 watts of power per port over CAT5 cables at a maximum voltage of 48 volts. What's well, suitable for most of the low power devices like IP phones, access points, and a basic camera. It may not be provided sufficient power for more demanding devices. IEEE 2.3 AT, or you can call that a POE Plus. This is updated standard can deliver up to 25.4 watts per port, making it ideal for more power hungry devices such as you know advanced wireless access points, pan to zoom cameras, PDZ cameras, and small network switchers. With the POE Plus, the voltage remains at 48 volts, but the power output per port is higher allowing for broader use cases. In IEEE 2.3 BT, or you can call that a POE++ or 4P POE, the latest POE standard, the IEEE 2.3 BT offers even more power with up to 60 watts per port type 3 and up to 100 watts type 4. This is essential for devices like high performance scared cameras, large digital displays that requires substantial power through the single Ethernet cable. POE++ ensures that a more robust infrastructure to support modern network applications. <music> Understanding the difference between a passive and active POE is crucial when deciding on your switch purchase, as it determines how the power is delivered and the compatibility with your devices. Let's talk about active POE. This is the most common type of the POE in the modern network equipment. And active POE dynamically adjusts the power output based on the device's needs, ensuring a safe and efficient power deliver. It is intelligent in nature, negotiating the power requirements between a switch and a device to ensure that the device only receives the amount of power it needs without overloading the port or the device. An active PoE is typically used for the PoE AF, PoE AT, and PoE BT devices, ensuring compliance with IEEE standards. Now let's talk about a passive PoE. Unlike active PoE, the passive PoE provides a fixed amount of power regardless of the device requirements. And this type of PoE is often used in the customer setups where you know exactly how much power each device will need. And a passive POE does not involve power negotiation between a device and a switch, meaning devices must be compatible with exact power output. Well, passive POE is simpler. It can lead to overpowered devices or potentially cause damage if a power supply exceeds the device's requirements.
So before choosing the POE switch, list the device you intended to power, like IP cameras, wireless access points, IP phones. Check their power requirements. It typically listed in watts to ensure that the POE standard and the power output of the switch meet their needs. For example, if you plan to power the high-end PTZ cameras, a POE++, the POE BT switch may be necessary. And also you need to consider the future growth. When selecting a switch, consider not only for your current need, but also future expansion. Up to four POE switch that supports higher power outputs for the future proof of your setup. Particularly if you anticipate adding power hungry devices in the coming years and a match passive or active POE with a device compatibility. If you are using older or specific devices that requires passive POE, ensure that your switch supports this configuration. However, if you are setting up modern network with a variety of devices, active POE is a recommended choice due to its compatibility with IEEE standards and a power negotiation features. The POE port maximum power output is one of the most important factors to consider when selecting the POE switch. By understanding the difference between the POE standards, POE AF, POE AT, and POE BT, the distinction between the passive and active POE, you can make the informed decision about which switch best suits your needs. Whether you are powering basic devices or more power demanding ones, selecting the right POE standard ensures that efficient and reliable operation of your network infrastructure. Be sure to choose the switch aligns with both your current requirements and the future network growth. <laughs>